keyboards are probably one of the most essential aspects of a computer. Without them, we'd be pretty screwed for anything other than looking at pictures on a USB drive. Welcome to my first ever review video on this channel. And today I'm gonna to be looking at the K65 RGB Compact Mechanical Gaming Keyboard by Corsair. Now just to start off, I'm obviously not getting any money from this nor is this video sponsored by Corsair or any other company. I actually bought this keyboard secondhand for half price off Gumtree. The guy I bought it off had some kind of weird gooey shit on some of the keys, but luckily the keys are removable, so I soaked them in hot water for a few minutes and got it all off. Anyway, this review is going to be broken down into a few parts. I want to talk mainly about the gaming aspect of the keyboard, because this is obviously its main purpose. Then I'm going to be moving on to the everyday use, the lighting, and finally the software. I'm not going to be describing every feature of the keyboard in this video, because this is a review, and I just want to give my opinion on it. If you want to know all the different features and design aspects of the K65 RGB, there are plenty of other videos to watch. So, jumping straight into it, let's start with the gaming aspect. So the MX Cherry keys are extremely responsive. You don't have to press it all the way down like you would with a black switch. This makes it a lot less tiring and allows you to press keys a lot quicker. And the palm rest makes it comfortable for your left hand to sit there for longer gaming sessions, so it doesn't have to rest against the edge of the keyboard. I don't know about you guys, my last keyboard had quite a drop off off the left edge, and it would actually press against my wrist and start to hurt after a while. Obviously with the K65, that's not an issue. And if you don't like the palm rest, you can easily remove it by simply unclipping it. There's also feet on the top edges, so you can alter the height depending on your gaming preference. And the 10 keyless design takes up a lot less space on your desk, so you have more room to move your mouse around. This is going to be especially important for Counter-Strike players, because I know some of you guys like to have like friggin' 40 centimeters to move your mouses around on. And this is actually especially useful for smaller desks, or if you sit near the right edge of the desk, like me. You can also choose to light up specific keys using the software, which I'll be getting into later on in the video. But just briefly, you can set macros or change the lighting of the keyboard to suit your game or environment. So if you have LED lights in the back of your computer, you can match your keyboard to those lights. So for example, you can change the WASD keys or the number keys to different colored lights, and this is gonna help you remember which macro does what, or just to locate the buttons quickly in low light. The most important part of the gaming aspect, in my opinion, is response time and input lag. So this keyboard has different polling rates, but the default is one millisecond. It's also wired, not wireless, so coupled with a low polling rate, means it's one of the fastest keyboards money can buy. Wireless keyboards are usually a no-go for gaming, especially games like Dota and Counter-Strike, because even a slight delay for skilled players can affect your game. You can also change the polling rate with a switch on the front, and this switch also has a BIOS option, which you can use to navigate through a BIOS with an older computer or a new computer with no drivers. So onto the software. Corsair has a keyboard utility that you can just download off the Corsair website. And this software, you can do everything from set macros, change keys, to changing the colors, the lighting effects, and all that kind of stuff of the keyboard. I won't go too much into depth because there's actually a lot to cover in terms of the software, but maybe I'll save that for a later video. Now onto the negatives. To be honest, there really aren't many. Perhaps the main one would be that the MX Cherry keys can be a bit loud. So if there's anyone else in the room, it can get a bit annoying. You can adjust your typing to be a little bit more silent, but even this still takes effort and still gonna be relatively loud. Thankfully though, it's not as loud as other Cherry Switch keyboards that I've used in the past. Another negative is that the USB cord is very thick, almost three times the size of a normal cord. This didn't really affect me, but some of you may not like it. You will need two USB ports on your computer to actually power this keyboard. So one's going to be for the actual keys, and one's going to be to power the LED lighting. So in conclusion, I'm actually quite happy with my purchase. The keyboard is quite expensive, so do try to pick it up secondhand if you can. These keyboards are usually very rugged, so they tend to last a long time and can take a bit of abuse without affecting it too much. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it interesting. I'm still using the keyboard, I've had it for about two months now. And if you have any questions or anything like that, leave a comment in the comment section below. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.